Hey, Vic. Uh, welcome to the What's Up Westfield. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you, sir. What's up, Kurt? Uh, <laughs> no, it's what, just What's Up Westfield. That's it. Yep. <laughs> That's funny. So you pointed this out um, where I'm at. I'd never uh, use these rooms. You probably spent a lot of time in this building, haven't you? I did, yeah, over the last four years. Uh, unfortunately, it came to an end in, in January, but I I was working at my alma mater, Westfield High School, in the special ed department. I loved being with the kids. And, and uh -huh. of course, I graduated in 2011, but it was a, a much different backdrop than or what it is. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think it's on like its 10th renovation. So yeah, now you finally get a new one completely. Mm -hmm. You're not on the library board, are you? I am not, no. Okay. I don't think so. Um, well, thanks for being here. Um, you know, yep. I don't know if you're familiar with these, but kind of run down. I've just learned a little bit more about you. I know you a little bit. We probably we've sat in a lot of rooms, uh, you know, council meetings and things like that. Yep. Uh, yeah, but I don't know a lot. I don't know a lot about you. And um, you've announced recently that you're running for council district mm -hmm. to be determined. Yes. And, T um, TBD. They just approved the new lines last <laughs> night, but I got to review that, that a little bit. Yeah, you might look into that. You might be moving, but um, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's cool. Well, all the stuff, you know, you're very involved. And so I think you're a, a good person to have on here. I don't know if that if it means anything to be on here, but uh, we have a lot of fun. And so uh, thanks for doing it. So why don't yeah. why don't you start by uh, just tell us about yourself. Tell us who Vic the Rock McCarty is. Yeah, absolutely. First, I want to say, yeah, with your backdrop being in the, the library, it's a long time coming for them getting the, the new library so really uh, excited cool. to see what's going to be happening downtown with that in the next couple of years but anyway about myself uh born and raised in westfield lived here my entire life all uh 29 and a half years <laughs> um really how the rock came to be was my lead up to high school it wasn't the best time for me um i was raised by my grandmother predominantly and she will always be a key figure in my life unfortunately she passed away in the beginning of 2020. So that was a real hard time for me. But um, nonetheless, uh, going into high school, I was 250 pounds and I'd oh, always wow. been the kid that was bullied. Yeah. So it, it was, again, a, a very rough patch for me. I didn't know who yeah, I was right. and what I wanted to be, so on and so forth. Um, so uh, it was kind of a, a weird coincidence, funny story, if you will. Um, I've always been a person of faith, but um, in 2008 or 2007, I should say, when I was a, a freshman, my fall freshman year, um, I just decided to uh, look up pictures of Jesus for some reason. So I did, and I came across this one of him on the cross, and um, it, it just really, it really touched me. It really moved me. Uh, mm -hmm. It was at that point I really, really dedicated myself to the Lord. And um, about a year later, I'd lost 100 pounds, and just through determination and uh, and and really motivating myself uh, through him you know one of my favorite bible verses i can do all things through him gives you strength and philippians okay. 4 13 because 4 13 is also my birthday <laughs> so it just pairs up like that but uh -huh. um so anyway the way the rock came to be then i come back sophomore year and again i'm like okay i just lost my weight um no longer being bullied as much as i was uh but is that it was at that point in time uh the school had gotten the mascot rocky and i was like huh, maybe that's something that I'd want to do. So long uh -huh. story short, junior and senior years, I became mascot or the rock is as people came to know. And uh -huh. I've just left it on my, my Facebook ever since um, because <laughs> really uh, it's a reminder that my, my passion for Westfield, but then also uh, my passion for my faith, you know, because God is my rock and I want to just uh, share that with people. It's unbelievable. So you, so I, I guess I assumed I don't know. I assumed other other stuff with that. And I would never again. <laughs> I know, I yeah. Know. A lot deeper a lot, than a lot of people a lot of people think that I have the rock because you know of the wrestler, but um, no, that, that's a lot more meaning behind it. Well, good for you, man. So and I can't imagine you because you seem like a really fit guy. Do you not eat anymore? Is that you just <laughs> I mean you, or I, I am a little bit health conscious. Uh, uh -huh. but uh, actually a funny story that I haven't eaten McDonald's since uh 2007 so even though oh, really? i do love chick-fil-a and some other uh -huh. fast food places but i've really pinpointed mcdonald's as oh my gosh they were responsible for uh -huh. yeah. and everything but um, wow, that's awesome no, that would just, be a, for a high school kid that's a huge transformation emotionally and physically yeah. and i mean were people blown away when you 
when you showed up or whatever? Yeah, actually, uh, first day of sophomore year. Um, I always like to tell this story. She's no longer teaching at, at Westfield, but uh, Mrs. Uh, Kelson, uh, she was my both freshman and sophomore English teacher. And she was going through roll call on first day for sophomore year. And she gets to me and she's like, Victor, where, where are you? I saw you come in. Everyone points to me. I raise my hand. She's like, wow, Victor, did you get a haircut? <laughs> so that, that's that was really it. what, yeah, that, that, that was it. That, that's, that's really awesome. what laid my path for the last few years. And, and again, I know I wasn't a nothing, but going from a nothing yeah. to a something, as you said, it's, it's a real uh, big mental scape to navigate mm-hmm. and, and finding your place in the world. Yeah. So when did you graduate? I graduated in 2011. And uh, Westfield at that time, being mascot, being out in the community and so forth, uh, became part of who I was. I mean, Mm -hmm. even when I went off to college, people were like, Victor, why are you so passionate about Westfield? It's (laughs) it's because of the transformation that I went through. And at that same time, Westfield became a city. So I just kind of compared it hand in hand and been that way ever since. Now you're stuck with it. I am stuck with it for better or worse. worse. (laughs) Yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world, but you can't move ever so. I, I can't no <laughs> so all right so you graduated and then what'd you do after high school graduation yeah so I went to Huntington University about 30 minutes south of Fort Wayne uh, I majored in what they called broadcast fusion media um, and it, I would have rather have been a big fish in a small pond as, as opposed to a small fish in a, a big pond that's why mm-hmm. I chose Huntington as opposed to Ball State you know where they, yeah. they are renowned for their broadcasting uh, program mm-hmm. uh, but I really had unique opportunities at Huntington to where um, I not just traveled the country with uh, broadcasting basketball games but also, I traveled to Japan and studied abroad. So that was a real amazing experience for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a part in starting the sports network at Huntington and again, broadcasting basketball and soccer and volleyball games. Um, so that was just a real awesome opportunity mm-hmm. for me. And uh, my, my whole goal was uh, one day I want to be a sports anchor. Well, <laughs> when I came home from college after graduating, um, my, my, my first number one goal was taking care of my grandmother and I couldn't uh, move to a smaller um, you know, in West Virginia or a smaller market, whatever it was, because uh, I, I wanted to take care of her. So that kind of okay. limited my options a little bit for good reasoning. Yeah. Uh, I was just working at American Eagle. And, and again, another funny story that uh, the uh, um, one of the recruiters from the state house visited my LinkedIn profile page, sent me a message saying, hey, would you like to come in for, for an interview? And I ended up working at the state house in the 2016 legislative session. And that's really how I dipped my toes into politics. Um, I, first, uh, I was involved in politics in 2012 when I was working for Mayor Ballard in Indianapolis. And that was a fun year with the Super Bowl and Indy 500 and all that yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah, when I was really getting into politics, I was campaign manager for local candidates like Donna Shibley. Um, mm-hmm. And then that's also when I really started to uh, attend and understand what was going on in Westfield at t- attending city council meetings. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so when was from, that? When, when was that? That was 2012, yeah. something like that? Uh, 2016. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. So I've been attending city council and planning commission meetings since uh, 2016 and regularly uh, since 2018, really. Okay. All right. So you graduate, you want to be a broadcaster. You're mm-hmm. somehow in politics, working with campaigns, yeah. <laughs> um, yep. and which is so typical, right? Professionally, oh, what, yeah. and then you went on, you left that, and what was your next work? What did you do next for work? Yeah, so in, in 2018, I was just kind of burned out from being in the, the political world, and also I had some personal things going on. And I just need to reset. Well, um, I reset by taking a uh, kind of a, a bro retreat to Europe and I backpacked Sweet. throughout Europe for, for the whole month of June and uh, it was a nice resetting period I came back closer to God than I'd ever been and uh, uh-huh. he really just helped me on my path and and then I started working at Westfield High School in in the special ed department I met my now wife I adopted my now dog and you know it was just one thing after another that I just feel very blessed and so you were uh, I know you're not there anymore but you how long were you at the school the high school the school yeah from from 2018 till uh last winter break um okay. that that okay. was my, my last tenure at the high school the day before uh winter break 2022 
no, this is 2022, 2021. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, now I'm, I'm in real estate. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now what do you do? What, now what yeah. do you do? Uh, and this came about, uh, I think majority of my opportunities are coming about just because of, it's all about who you know. It's not necessarily yeah. what you know, as well as you're willing to learn, but who you uh-huh. know. So my, my real estate agent, um, she got a message from my now boss saying, hey, we're looking for a marketing person at Berkshire Hathaway. Um, she forwarded it to me and I was like, wow, this, this would be awesome. Awesome yeah. opportunity. And so yeah. I've been working at Berkshire Hathaway ever since January. So what's your job there? What do you do there? Yeah, I am a, a realtor support with uh, being a marketing coordinator where I'm creating postcards, graphics, uh, creating things for the office. Just last week, uh, we had this huge presentation for uh, business planning in 2023. Um, so I, I had a heavy hand in that. And um, it, it's just been a, a great learning experience and honing my craft when it comes to creating graphics and whatnot. So did you know, I, I mean, did you know that kind of stuff before you took that job? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, just just dabbling myself uh mm-hmm. I use canva a lot and canva's made oh, okay, it super yeah. easy to to design things so that mm-hmm. but then also going back to college where i would be editing not just producing uh but editing and recording and, and being the person in front of the camera for mm-hmm. all the productions that we had um so I, I have that background with it it's just that i hadn't been able to use it till now yeah well then you'll appreciate once you see the final product of this that the long post-production period oh absolutely yeah uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well that that's got to be cool working at berkshire hathaway big company a lot of cool things going on a busy couple of years yeah. so probably fun fun job isn't it New yeah stuff. and part of me being there that i thought has been a nice eye-opening experience that uh being on the planning commission and i hear certain terms thrown out from my board and so on and so forth I'm yeah like, oh hey i hear these things that work all the time <laughs> you know what they're <laughs> so talking about a now nice synergy yeah uh-huh so um you touched on a little you've had your grandmother who passed away um yeah. who's your fam? who's your family you're married uh you got a yeah. dog tell us about your family yeah so my wife is chelsea mccarty and she actually works mm-hmm. for westfield welcome i'm super proud of everything that she's able to do and following her passion on event management and graphic design as well so she, she's awesome in everything that she's, she's doing she's in charge of the goofy videos too i think i'm convinced she, she she's is. the lead yeah, actor yeah. <laughs> i may have be pushing her in that direction a little bit oh, you're you know, good. building her yep. confidence you know yep, good for uh, you. And then, our dog is uh, Bucky. He's a, okay. a, a puggle, a beagle pug and a little bit of Sheba mix. I adopted uh-huh. him from the Humane Society. Um, right. And then uh, my mom and dad, they're around. They live in Hortonville, uh, okay. Vaughn and JR. So um, yeah, that's it's always been a, a small knit family. Yeah. So you just said Hortonville. Are you, would you say you're yeah. from Hortonville? No, uh, they just okay. live there. They're now. Okay. I've actually lived basically my entire life on 186th Street. Uh, okay. but I know you're on the east side of Westfield yeah. 186. I'm on the west side. Yeah. Uh, so that's where my grandmother's house, my grandmother and grandfather built their house in the uh, early 70s and lived okay. there ever since. And then my family as a whole has, has been here for about 100 years or cool. whatever. So, and my wife and I, we built our home in Water's Edge and I can actually see my grandmother's house on our back porch. <laughs> so, uh-huh. yeah. And then just uh, across the woods, uh, my mom and dad used to live in the trailer park there. So, yeah, okay, I've, cool. I've only ever lived in like this triangle. <laughs> yeah, right. A little small area. So you're, uh, you're, do you remember your growing up, like your grandparents or whoever, or your parents, your family uh, complaining about or talking about what it used to be and how it's changing and stuff like that? Oh, absolutely. I still hear uh, it from my mom. <laughs> yeah. You know, she, she's always got my ear of, you know, Victor, uh-huh. we got to keep it like this. And yeah, you know, I, I have that unique mindset where, Again, being here my whole life where, yes, I, I love what Westfield has been, but being part of the now generation, I want to see Westfield move forward. And there's a lot of opportunity that as long as we seize it, take advantage of it, we can really do some awesome things. You know, I don't have that perception on anything. I don't have a roots anywhere. Um, and so I don't have I don't have this tie to a community. I mean, the longest I've ever lived anywhere is here. And I, so I don't, there's no, you know, I don't, grandma's property. I don't have that in my head. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's been interesting because I didn't grow up knowing that either. It's been mm-hmm. interesting the last 15 years uh, and more so in the last probably five or 10 
because the conversation of change is going on. It's been, it, to me, it's yeah. fascinating that, that reality that, you know, you, you do have a history and a lot of my friends now have a history that I, yeah. I don't relate to, but it's there. So. Uh, yeah. And too. I've always been told that I have an old soul and do, that's <laughs> due in part because of my grandmother. Um, um, yeah. The, the closest grocery store that we had when, when I was a kid back in the nineties was the, the Kroger down on union, not union, sorry, range line in Carmel. Um, oh, okay. so we had that Kroger and then Marsh, but we were more Kroger uh, people than Marsh people. Oh, yeah. um, and then things just started building up, you know, that the Meyer and Carmel was built, so on and so forth. It, uh, it slowly creaked out here over the past 20 plus years. And we're yeah. kind of now where Carmel was at 20 years ago. Yep. Um, but yeah, I remember when roads were, were gravel and there's now the, still the same width, but there's paint. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> Some of them. Yeah. So, so you're a politician now, Victor. I am for um, better or worse. <laughs> how did you, and I mean, I've read, I know how you do this, but tell us quick, uh, not quick, just tell us how you got first assigned or how you got into a political or any type of board or stuff like that. How you kind of got yeah. tied in. Yeah. And I appreciate all the, the questions that I receive from people of, Hey, Victor, how do I get involved? You know, cause uh -huh. now I'm at that point where I can help people start to get involved. But yeah. um, I was just very fortunate um, for uh, mayor cook. Uh, he saw that I was attending uh, meetings and being one of the youngest people in the room, usually mm -hmm. uh, he was like, Oh, we need more young people involved. So <laughs> I'll always be very thankful for him giving me the opportunity to yep. be on planning commission and, and board of zoning. And, and that's really helped me learn and grow over the past few years to, to find my own voice. You know, even though he appointed me, I have my own thoughts and opinions. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a call. I still remember it. Uh, do you know, make me at all? I do. Yeah. So Mick Mead um, called me one day and said, hey, Kurt, we're trying to, we're starting a uh, rotary. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> and we need some young people for it. And I didn't know that he was being serious. Like, they need some young people for it. And yeah. when it started, I mean, like, John Kerr was probably, like, the next youngest to me. And yeah. He's probably, oh, 15 years older than me. But um, so I used to laugh. It was such an old group. And they were awesome. They were a lot of fun. But yeah. Um, we need young people to get involved in stuff. And so uh, we need to keep recruiting. You're, you're, you made a good point that now you can help people. I, I'm probably not real good about it, but starting to recruit people younger than us now. Um, yeah. And Cause, cause you're, you know, you we, do that. Yeah. We have to just take advantage of what we have now, mm -hmm. because if people always ask me, Victor, why are you running now? Well, it's because the longer you wait and wait and wait, uh, the longer time uh, getting things done it'll take and yeah. I, I don't have that mindset that was kind of something my grandmother and I would have many a conversations about she was more of the person that wanted to wait to do this or buy that uh -huh. so on and so forth and I'm like no the, the prices are just going to go up or yeah. you know whatever it was you know let, let's get it done yeah, um, keep moving so yeah. I, I just want to see things done all right so what did the mayor appoint you to or what 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 did your first step and when the mayor grabbed yeah. you and said young man so first uh it was planning commission and okay. and then i think it was just after one meeting or i didn't have a meeting yet uh a position opened up for the board of zoning and um he asked me about that and i was like oh i don't know because i didn't know much about bza at that time because mm -hmm. i was again just attending planning commission and city council meetings um uh, okay. but here we are just over two years later and um i actually like BZA almost a little bit more than planning commission because of the amount of interaction that I have with people. Yeah. Granted, a lot of those are pools approving variances uh -huh. and, and so forth, but um, there's been some bigger projects. Like I'm, I'm very proud to have been part of the SEP headquarters. Uh, that, that was awesome to come across BZA with that. Um, now I'm, I'm not saying I don't like planning commission because I, I thoroughly enjoy that as well. Um, mm -hmm. But on the posts that uh, the, the updates I have for planning commission and city council meetings you know, in our consent agenda for APC, uh, sometimes it'll be fast food and a CVS, yeah. uh, uh, a whatever. Dolphin, whatever it is. And yeah. uh, people will be like, Oh, we don't need another this. We don't need another that. And it's like, Hey, it, it's not us. Okay. We <laughs> legally have to uh, approve this. It, it's yeah. on our consent agenda. It's approved use yeah. in the PUD. So um, that's around that time when I was appointed, I, I started my page, my Victor and Westfield page before 
Um, I was appointed to planning commission and BZA, but uh, it just worked out perfectly. Um, and, and ever since, I've, I've just wanted to share information because I feel like, especially in 2020, when everyone was locked down, uh, that's what people were craving, was just to be in the know, have that human interaction, making positive relationships. And, you know, that was um, to add on to that. Um, there was I was always really frustrated in the past, the lack of information that came out of council meetings or lack of dialogue. And I don't yeah. think you. I guess you do a little bit of an opinion. We know where you stand on stuff, but um, a lot of it's just, we want the information needs to be clean. Yeah. And you know, the fact that to this day, your map of what's going on west of 31 on 32 <laughs> is the only real tool out there. And you I probably know. get it real quick. Um, yeah. I love, that's what we need though is, and maybe that's not the city's responsibility that, but the fact that, you know, you've been a good resource for that. And thank you. Um, yeah. And so I always, you know, uh, Chuck Lehman wasn't going to do that. You know, you know, the, the <laughs> previous council, those guys were not going to do that stuff. And so I think it's important you've done that. Um, and and I, it makes me laugh when that thing gets shared around in the map and oh, they ask the I same I, questions. I learned my lesson. Uh, the first time I posted a map, my wife, she yeah. said, you should really watermark that. And I'm like, no, I don't care about myself. I just want to get information out there. Well, then that ended up being shared over a hundred times and, and yeah. people still to this day if someone asks a question on the chatter they post that and i'm like oh yeah. gosh i should have watched it so or no they'll tag you yep, they'll tag they, you a lot of times well it's gotten good. to the point where someone has a question and someone will see it and tag me and be like hey victor do you know this answer and i'm like oh my gosh well, that's good. i guess i'm just like, waiting mean, for punishment thank you for doing that i mean quite honestly you know one of the big problems with government and politics is um they sit on a podium and make a decision and there's no dialogue yeah. and yeah. they think that, and, and I don't think there should be constant argument and debating and questioning, but um, mm -hmm. why can't a counselor talk, talk to their audience and, or you know, why can't a politician speak to the people? I mean, from every level, the mayor doesn't do it. The council doesn't do it. APC doesn't do it. So for you to do that is, I think it's pretty cool. So. Yeah. And, and really I don't put value in a title or position, I put mm -hmm. value in just drive, determination, and passion and purpose. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that Westfield is not just my passion, but my purpose is to serve others. Mm -hmm. uh, so my focus has never been about me. It's just always been trying to serve others and help people. And mm -hmm. I think that's really resonated with, with folks and, yeah. and the comments that I get to this day. And I'm, I'm very appreciative of it. Again, mm -hmm. being a kid that grew up in the middle of nowhere, not having many friends and to uh, not to bring her up again, but in losing my grandmother uh, mm -hmm. really before my page started to take off, um, my purpose shifted from taking care of her to trying to help be a good steward of Westfield. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I don't care if you're mayor, city councilor, planning commission, whatever it is, you know, just share information because that's what people want. People yeah. want to be in the know. Um, okay. So, for those that don't know the difference, what is yeah. a APC and BZA? Yeah, so APC is Advisory Planning Commission. Um, I kind of compare it to where you have the mayor, city council, planning commission. Um, uh, projects, so say a PUD is, uh, we'll use Meyer just because it's the first one that came to mind. Uh, Meyer was first introduced to city council. Then it goes to planning commission to see changes that need to be done to, to fit the area, fit the PUD, the, the overlay, whatever it is. Um, and then we give it either a favorable recommendation or a negative recommendation. It goes back to council for a final vote. Uh, sometimes council, I haven't been a part of this yet, but council can send it back to planning commission if it needs more work to be done. But usually that's the steps of council, planning commission, council, it's approved. Um, and then at some point in time, like again, if it's a massive planned unit development PUD, um, if there are individual parcels in there being developed, uh, we'll see something from that PUD in our consent agenda, which is then where you get the fast food or other restaurants, uh, mm -hmm. tire stores, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you want headquarters, you know, some big things to help the tax mm -hmm. base. Um, but those will be on our consent agenda just to uh, confirm that said building fits the design or fits the overlay, right. whatever it is. Okay. And then board of zoning, 
uh, BZA. It's a quasi juridical uh, board where we are literally judge, jury, executioner, and we cannot know anything about a development <clears throat> before it's presented to us at said meeting because um, we can't be swayed one way or another. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's also why I appreciate the BZA so much because I have everything thrown at me right then and there. And yeah. that's where I thrive. I thrive in the fire. So I, I like to have all that information and just go shoot by the hip. The hip. Yeah. Um, APC. So you guys have gotten a lot of grief lately on the APC. Um, yes. Because it's an awful process. And I don't think. It's, oh, my gosh. I don't think it's easy anywhere because no. you're trying to make five or seven or whatever people happy. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think it's exponentially more difficult in Westfield. Yeah. Um, what are ways like recently you've kind of spoken up on it too. I know that I know uh, yeah. respectfully you do that, but what are some <laughs> ways that an APC uh, because we're now at zero new development projects and yeah. I don't think it's 100% because of that. You're not all to blame for that. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's got something to, I think it's got something to do with it. Oh, and so, absolutely. Cause it's what people see. Yeah. What are some things that, the APC itself is trying to do or is doing or isn't doing, but ways that it can improve that process or in your opinion. Yeah. So I'll start off with the positive that one thing that we've just started to do is implement a workshop meeting. Uh, so hopefully with this, where our first meeting of the month is the one that's our business meeting where we get things done. And then the workshop meeting is where petitioners can come in and that's where we really work on things as the name implies uh, make sure we nail down all, everything at that meeting so that way they can come back the next one for uh, a recommendation, approval, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the negative side of that, I think that's awesome that we've done that. But the uh, negative side, as you were talking about, we have this uh, just outside of our bubble, people asking all the time of what's going on in Westfield? Why are things taking so long? And it doesn't help when we have projects come back three, four, five times. You know, that's not just a waste of the petitioner's time, but it's also a waste of money too, because they're, they're paying legal fees to have someone represent them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that I've been very frustrated with on certain, mm -hmm. certain projects. Um, and it, it's always because a new issue is brought up. You know, if you have issues, I want everything out at that very first meeting. Let's take care of it. And then if the petitioner comes back and still hasn't addressed it, well, then it's your right to, to vote no yeah. or, or whatever it yeah. may be. Um, but I don't think that we should continuously try to, to hang people up, so to speak, just because mm -hmm. one person has fault with landscaping or whatever it is. Yeah. You know? um, again, I, I want to move forward. I want to get stuff done. And yeah. I think that's attributed to having a goose egg, zero things in pipeline right now. Yeah. Do you think, so one of the, on a recent uh, project, the paint color, the color of the building came up and yeah. I, I, I know your opinion on it, but yeah, how do, how do we get to where that's not an issue in the future that doesn't take up 30 minutes of a meeting in a sin bag because it just well, seems like it's overreach. Is it not overreach? It is overreach. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is not our role, whether as a planning commission member or even a city councilor, to micromanage a project. Um, uh -huh. They are supposed to bring something, they as the petitioner is supposed to bring something forward. And if it fits said overlay designs, fantastic. You know, it's an easier uh -huh. process that way. If it doesn't, then of course we have to evaluate if it suits Westfield. But at the same time, um, one of my fellow commission members said at a previous meeting that it's, it's not our job to design it for you, but yet mm -hmm. we are, you know, it's a, that's not our responsibility. Yeah. That's not in our purview, you know, whether it be paint colors or business plans, that, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're, we're supposed yeah. to be, you know, kind of extending an olive branch a little bit and saying, Hey, welcome to Westfield. You know um, we don't like this. I think we can do better here, but we shouldn't be designing projects. Yeah. So this is a, uh, you probably don't know this, but there's a light community game, drinking game that goes along oh, yeah. with APC meetings. And uh -huh. it's um, one of the reasons to drink is when someone says, that's not really what I imagined there. <laughs> Another one is when they are 
planning to vote and they say they have to come back again uh, yeah. another time. That is a reason to drink. And the, the other one is paint color. So yeah. when APC tells someone they don't like the color of the building or something or a, something uh, like that, you drink. So yeah. um, there's been some long nights. That, uh, there has. Of that, so. Yeah. And, and that's not something coming into it that I thought was really going to be a thing because it yeah. hadn't been a thing in the past. But um, there's some nights where I don't get home until after 11 o'clock, you know, 11 p.m. And it's just like, wow, where the time, though? Why did we spend that much time on a single <laughs> item? And we're going in circles, being uh -huh. a dead horse. Like, let's move on. You know, yeah. we don't have to keep rehashing things. And it's things you spend a lot of time. You exhaust things that should have probably never be brought up. Yeah. Um, and so, so while you're up there, we're at home drinking on our couch, hoping no one yeah. says that stuff again. No, we would stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No so, well, um, okay. thankfully for my sake, I don't actually drink. You know, I love a good root beer, but <laughs> alcohol, right. no. <laughs> good. good for you. Well, you wouldn't do any good at the game. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right so apc is fun bza is fun you see a lot of cool stuff it's it's how a city is developed and you yeah. get to touch a lot of projects and have an input um what uh you uh recently have announced you're running for council yes which is the next step and one of your one of your and i relate kind of to this one of the comments you had when you were announcing it is that you're always the youngest and you've been told to wait your turn or you know and i'm yeah. paraphrasing it, but um i've you've taken some i've witnessed you taking some pretty good jabs and you you don't act you know you're yes you're the youngest yeah but i i think um when you announced to run for council i hope that doesn't make you think you're an underdog on it or people to mm -hmm. think you're an underdog because quite frankly there's some people that should say I'm too old to be doing this. You know what I yeah. mean? Or, or I'm yeah. past my time. So I think if anything, I think you have a leg up. So what, why did, what got you to run now? And um, how do you think you can be impactful as a counselor? Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate what you just said as well. I resonate with that. Um, so that's the question. Why now? Um, and, and, and really it's, yeah. <laughs> and, and really it's because again, I have such a passion for serving Westfield and, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'd be lying if I said that I hadn't been thinking about this all the time, you know, uh, -huh. uh ever since that transformation that I mentioned back in 2007, 2008, um, and trying to find my purpose in the world was mm -hmm. uh, again, what do I want to do? And that, that little bulb in my head, that little thought, it was like, oh, Maybe one day I can be at the next level of, of city service, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's one day being a city councilor or, or far in the future being mayor, you know, whatever it is, see a need, fill a need. When the time is right, I'll know and I'll do it. And mm -hmm. I think just because of um, trying to be careful here, a lot of the negative rhetoric that has happened the past couple of years, um, it, it's, it's hurt. It, it's hurt a lot of people. And that is something uh, I'm an empath and my wife's also an empath. And I guess it's kind of rubbed off on me now where when I see people hurting, um, it just doesn't sit well with me. You know, I feel like I have to do something. Um, and again, it, it's not about me. You know, it's not about me. It's not about my wife. You know, Westfield is bigger than all of us. Mm -hmm. um, it's about the, the people who are working for the city. It's about our citizens. It's about the businesses. It's mm -hmm. about just everyone in general that's here in Westfield. And to, to have individuals be more self-service as opposed to public service, it, it doesn't sit well with me. So that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I'm running now. And I've come, uh, come up with this uh, slogan, so to speak, of hashtag we rise. And uh, I'm big on acronyms. Uh, mm -hmm. Rise to me stands for uh, relationships, infrastructure, safety, and engagement. And I think all four of those are, are huge for a, a living, breathing, thriving community. You got to have positive relationships. You got to have viable roads and bridges and tunnels, whatever it is, to, to have good infrastructure. Um, mm -hmm. Public safety. Westfield has been consistently ranked one of the, the safest cities to, to live in Indiana. We got to keep that going. We got to make sure mm -hmm. our, our fire is funded, our police are funded, new uh, headquarters coming up for both, and then engagement. I might be a little biased with this one, but I've been uh, volunteering for Westfield Welcome since before I met my wife, but uh, in, in 20, We know you have to do it. It's okay. Uh, I you're, know. You're required. I, I'm, I'm voluntold now, so. <laughs> um, but 
see, being at events, pretty much every single event I'm at now. Uh, so seeing uh, people from my, my background where, you know, growing up in a trailer park um, to the broad spectrum, people in a trailer park all the way up to lives in uh, Chatham Hills or Bridgewater, whatever it is. So being able to unite people, bring people together at events, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, upcoming, we have a uh, trick or treating in the plaza or movies in the plaza, uh, rocks the fourth, you know, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, we want to have uh, a community where you not just want to work or you mm -hmm. want to live, but you also want to play too. You want to be engaged because yeah. um, what is a community without people supporting one another? Mm -hmm. So what do you think, what, why do you think you would be a good counselor? What yeah, specifically, what are some things in your toolbox or in your head or that you're observing that you would specifically like to change that make a good counselor or could make a difference? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's due in part to a little bit what I've been doing on my page the past couple of years. Um, that's where my expertise is, is relationships, the, mm -hmm. the marketing side mm -hmm. of things. Um, and I don't think we necessarily have kind of much of that right now where someone yeah. who has all right so let's go back to that that yeah. on every level right you yeah. don't have good really at every level do you feel like who do you think has the relationship right now no one outsiders uh you know i'm sorry we're, we're, who has a relationship with the community right now in your head oh, does okay. anybody does i mean who's driving that car right now yeah no that that is a very valid question um because I'm going to be a little tough right now. I don't think anyone's driving the ship yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so w one thing that, you know, we like to uh, narc on Carmel of, oh my gosh, one guy has been in power for however long, but mm -hmm. they have been able to do some awesome, amazing things. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up to, uh, I grew up going to church in Carmel. So I saw all that development as I was growing up mm -hmm. and um, when I went around my first roundabout, I was like, oh my gosh, this is dumb, you know, whatever Awful. like that. <laughs> yeah, but I've become a believer, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And honestly, uh, when I was in Europe, um, you know, I went to France and England and Spain, they all had roundabouts. So mm -hmm. it, it's just fascinating to see how other parts of the world uh, handle transportation, what works, and, and bring it back here. And that's what mm -hmm. Carmel's been able to do. It's, you know, you take so the, you the negatives and positives together. As a counselor, do you think um, that is the job of a counselor to be have a good relationship with the community? Do you think one hundred percent? Yeah. What was the next part you're about to say? Sorry, um, that was it. So, um, oh, okay. so <laughs> yeah, dang it, you killed the temp. I killed the uh, tempo. I know, I'm I know. sorry. I the <laughs> um, go back and yeah. I'll finish my, my thought real quick of why I okay. think I'm I'm best for the role. Uh -huh. um, it's not just my ability to build positive relationships, but again, it's yeah. the unique position that I'm in of living here my whole life, seeing where we've been, but yet having the mindset to want to move forward and seeing mm -hmm. what can be best for Westfield and just mm -hmm. not be stuck in our ways. Like, like, let's embrace new things. And that's hard. I think it's hard. I mean, it's, you know, I, I try to be sensitive to, uh, the grandmas of the town, you know, that have, yeah. you know what I mean? And I, I get it. I, all right. I get when they, when you talk to them, they're, they're pretty passionate. Like Judy Shuck, yeah. I did a podcast with her once and, uh -huh. you know, after I met with her, she's not a bad person. She may yeah. have, she may have outsmarted the city um, <laughs> yeah. and uh, whooped our tail when it comes to running a road through town, but um, mm -hmm. it's not a bad person. She, she's, you know, a nice lady. So she's got to read, she, you know, she's allowed to have an opinion, but what a, what is hard it, to me is um, I don't know if the council has not done a good job of uh, giving both all sides a fair shot. You know, that it's yeah. very polarized. You know, some people are saying stop development and other people mm -hmm. are, it's an open, you know, tear through yeah. it. So yeah. do you, you really think there's something in the middle there? Yeah. Do you think this, the city as a counselor now, the next council, do you think they will have an impact on, um, the community and what's next, what's to grow from it? How do you yeah, feel like yeah. the next council is gonna, gonna be? Well, it's a weird question. prior to the next council, yeah. but more so just next year in general, the next election cycle, 
Um, I think Westfield has kind of hit a fork in the road if we have two ways that we can go. We can either mm -hmm. continue down the path we are right now where there's a lot of infighting and mm -hmm. um, just really doing things for the wrong reasons and mm -hmm. not moving forward. Or we can move forward. We can get past things. The past is the past. Let's work together. Iron sharpens iron. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. So we, we got that fork in the road and decision to make. So I think the next council is going to be extremely pivotal to where Westfield is going to go. Because uh, yeah. again, I compare to where we are right now is about to where karma was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we got a lot of catching up to do. I'm not saying that we have to be Carmel. I don't want to be Carmel. I want us to be Westfield. Yeah. Let's forge our own path, but let's see yeah. what's worked in, at our neighbors across the county as well as other regional areas. Find what works, bring it home and, and put Westfield at the, the front. Mm -hmm. So um, the a previous when I first started hanging out, the previous council was like the Jim Aches and those guys. Yes, and everybody yeah. had, everybody had good things, everybody had bad things. But a lot of the stuff we see today is from their vision or their work. So like Grand Junction mm -hmm. Plaza, uh, those yeah. guys, that council uh, spent a lot of time with the Grand Junction Task Group on that, and Grand mm -hmm. Park, um, they spent a lot of time with it. Um, I don't feel like anyone has a vision for the next step. Yeah. And I don't feel like, for instance, Grand Park. I think Grand Park was a wonderful idea. I think it's neat. Um, I don't think past soccer fields it has any vision or um, yeah. um, it's or working. And I, yeah. we can fluff it and say, yeah, it brings a lot of people here. It's great for economic development. Yeah. Every time we do a ribbon cutting, we ask them to talk about Grand Park. Yeah. Um, but in reality, I think that's one of those things that just didn't go any further. So who is supposed to be working on that next vision? Is the, is it the council? Is it a mayor? Is it, yeah. Um, should we be already working on something now? I know that Jim Brainerd had a vision. I know Fadness has a vision. Yep. I know the council, Noble Soul council has a vision. Uh, yep. What do you, where do you see that next? I see that there's no vision right now. <laughs> that's, that's what I From see. Anyway. Yeah. Because I think mm -hmm. that, Certain individuals are just wrapped up in certain things. And, um, and, and again, I want to say I'm, I'm very appreciative to, to Mayor Cook for giving me opportunities that I've had. Um, but he's been under attack a lot recently, and he's, he's been trying to do what he can. Um, at the same time, though, I think he might just be kind of over it. You know, yeah. you know, wh why, you know, if he doesn't run again, we don't know if he is or not yet, but yeah. um, with the attacks that he's had to face, you know, why should he be doing certain things? You know, he, he yeah. does what he can, but at the same time, you're, you're going to hear the naysayers no matter what. So it's like, well, shoot. Um, I wanted to go back to what you mentioned with uh, Jim Ake and Steve Hoover and Chuck Lehman, et cetera, the previous council where mm -hmm. you're 100 percent right. Um we are just now feeling the effects of things that were approved five to 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and people don't understand that. that we're, we're still seeing things built right now because they were approved so long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's where, what's going to hurt us right now is we're not necessarily approving those things that's going to impact us five, 10 years down the road. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not being proactive in certain things like infrastructure, so on and so forth. Um, and, and that's what certain people don't realize is that we have to be making decisions and actions today because things take forever to get done. If we mm -hmm. don't do it today, then it just continues to prolong the process. Mm -hmm. um, going to uh, Grand Park though, with that thought, um, yeah, I think Grand Park's been extremely underutilized. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love what it's done for our community, putting us on the map and, and growing up, living my entire life just down the road from it. And, yeah. uh, the first time cool. I came home from college where um, I was in traffic from 186 to um, on Spring Mill to 32 for like 30 minutes. I was like, what is this? Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. Talk about a shock coming home. Um, but since then, not, not much has changed. We haven't really added anything. You know, I, yeah. I have a vision of, hey, I, I love to my wife and I love to go to Disney. We, we love to travel around the country and wherever we go, there seems to be a huge draw of for visitors and then right across the street or at least in the proximity people can go eat they can go shop they can stay at a hotel you know mm -hmm. entertainment whatever is that that's a big thing entertainment i hear all the mm -hmm. time from people of there's nothing to do in westfield well if you yeah. think there's nothing to do in westfield right now there was extremely nothing to do <laughs> you know, <just laughs> two years ago yeah <laughs> 10 plus years ago yeah 
I'm, I'm really happy we have birdies, love going there. Mm -hmm. um, but th those folks are 100% right that what we need more opportunity for not just our visitors, but for our residents as well. You know, there, there's a lot of land around Grand Park. Let's utilize it. We'll, we'll see what happens with whether or not we're going to sell, not sell, what the right thing to do is on that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily have an opinion either way on that just because I don't have all the facts in front of me. Um, but you are right that there's more that can be done and in terms of whose responsibility is. Um, I think it'll really fall on the shoulders of the next mayor because there will be a lot of PR that has to be done of going out to meet businesses and say, hey, no, we want you here. But then it's also up to the council. It goes hand in hand up to the counselors to also be out there making those positive relationships. It's not just a one man job. It's no. everyone. Everyone has to be working together. And, and quite honestly, we haven't been seeing that over the past few years. People haven't yeah. been working together. It's more, again, of that infighting. Um, I hope that answers so, the questions. <laughs> yeah, that answered lots of questions. Um, yeah. Don't worry, I don't think I asked a real question last time. So, um, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, council's next. Um, do you, in your head, are you a guy that wants to be mayor someday, or county commissioner, or keep going, or do you not know yet, or? Um, um, because of kind of being involved at all levels, uh, from the state house, the local level. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I can't say all levels and I haven't been involved in presidential campaigns, but yeah. um, nonetheless, being involved at those levels, I I've really learned that you got to follow your heart and where my heart is, is in Westfield. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have any future ambitions to be a state representative or a uh, congressman, whatever it is like that. Mm -hmm. I want to stay in Westfield. So, you know, if I can be city councilor, fantastic, however long that is. And then mm -hmm. if the next opportunity opens up to where 20, 30 years down the road that, um, well, hopefully not 30 years down the road because I'm 29 now. Long but, time. <laughs> yeah, because uh, well, like you, you were saying, um, there comes a certain point when you reach an, an age where it's like, mm -hmm. okay, we got to let these next people mm -hmm. take over. And I, I know one day I'll reach that. I'm not there right now. Obviously, I'm just getting my, my footing, getting my start. Um, yeah. But so maybe in the next 15, 20 years, I would consider running for mayor, but definitely not right now. We got at least right now, two great candidates that have announced for next year. So I'm just excited for next year in general. Yeah, it'll be pretty wild, I think, when it comes up. Um, yeah. All right. So kind of I kind of jumped around there. I missed a line of my questions. So oh, yeah. when we talk about like uh, Grand Park and Grand, Grand Junction Plaza, uh, what yeah. do you think? What, and you kind of talked about how the council needs to be out relationships. The mayor needs to be out selling. Um, yeah. Where do you think we still are missing opportunities or could improve on our economic development? Um, yeah. Because a city, ha and I know there's conversation about, but I'm in sales, you always have to keep growing to a degree. Yes, yes. Um, and we're probably seeing that, like you sp spoke on, that infrastructure is going to have to get caught up and we're, mm -hmm. we're not seeing the revenue increase. It's, where, where can we, even with a fighting mayor and council or a, no vision or a a stock where, where can counselors have an impact on economic development still? Yeah, well, I think it first starts with putting egos aside yeah. and, and again, stopping the infighting. Um, and uh, to Mayor Cook's credit, you know, he has been able to bring in the Abbots, the Bastions, you know, some of these big corporations to bring their headquarters here. That has been awesome, you know, but again, it's a two way street. It's not just the mayor that has to be out there, it's the city council as well. So. Um, in terms of economic development, it's great that we've been able to attract those companies I mentioned and others so far, but there's still more work to be done. And you mentioned Grand Junction Plaza. Um, I've been fortunate to be part of the old town development uh, that's going to be right across from there. That is going to be huge, amazing for our downtown. Mm -hmm. That's going to be really our building blocks to be able to build from there and, and however we want our downtown to be, because as much as certain people might say, I'm sorry, we don't have a downtown right now. Um, mm -hmm. I, I go to small towns across the state and just mm -hmm. even the cities in our county, they mm -hmm. all have downtowns. Yeah. Uh, Sheridan has a downtown. Cicero uh -huh. has a downtown. Uh -huh. We don't have that historic quote unquote infrastructure that others yeah. do. You know, we really need to build upon that work. And, and I'm not mm -hmm. saying we need to copy what Carmel and Fishers has done. Absolutely not. But we need to build something to make a destination for our downtown mm -hmm. um and again that um i 
hate to sound like a broken record, but that starts with um, if the mayor is going out and selling our city and bringing mm-hmm. someone in for economic development, well, then that goes to city council and they have to approve whether or not said corporation moves here with their headquarters or their business or whatever it is. And, and same thing with planning commission as well. They have a, a smaller part. They're approving more of the aesthetics and the use. Um, mm-hmm. But if, if the mayor's bringing someone in, then council has to, to close the deal. They got to be the closer. So mm-hmm. if the mayor's opening it up, council's got to be the closer. Yeah. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm, boo- I'm boohoo sometimes, sir, but I think a lot of it's just, <laughs> we all that's are. what drives, that's what drives my hustle is I don't think things are enough. And so yeah. um, I still think in the greatest 10 years economically we've had that you just named two or three companies yeah. that have been brought here. I, we have to be able to do better than that. You'd think. And, and I know we've competed for a few and you can't control them all, but, yeah. Uh, my hope is that um, even with everybody not disagreeing, there's a way to everyone to see that we have to go out and get those users. Absolutely. And especially yeah. now that you've made it, you, you, Vic. No, especially <laughs> now that the city's um, got a reputation kind of in the development community that yeah. they don't want to come here and try to do spec. They're not going to yeah. go shop us around when they can go to Fisher's Noble anywhere else and yeah. it's a done deal. So I think. Uh, hopefully that is the style of leadership we get in the next round here or the next couple of rounds. Cause it's going to take a while. Yeah. Um, and, and I do want to go back to Grand Park real quick because we were talking about economic development. Um, I do think that Grand Park has been doing what it was meant for, which mm-hmm. tried to be that economic development for the city. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Carmel, they're known for arts, many other things, but arts and design. Uh Fishers, they've become kind of that, that tech capital. Uh, Noblesville is more on that historic side. But I know that Mayor Jensen, they just uh, pushed forward their, uh, what, what is it, the tech mile or the, the tech hub, whatever they're going to have to. So they're, they're moving things over there as well. Uh, but Westfield, our industry is kind of really that hospitality, tourism, youth sports. So how do we capitalize on that? And it's, again, just being able to best uh, take advantage of opportunities that are around Grand Park, whether it be through hotels or events, um, u- utilizing it as a venue. Uh, you know, I see Grand Park kind of like our Lucas Oil to a degree, mm-hmm. where uh, we have a venue that can hold events and be a big draw, but then we have to build around that, whether it's mm-hmm. be bringing in those corporations or entertainment, restaurants, so on and so forth. So we, we, we got that little nugget, now we got to build around it. So, and that's one of the, this is a, a, a good topic here. So, um, Fisher's, the tech hub, tech stuff, yeah. they went out and they created a world around it. They're like, we're going to be the best. We're going to go get yep. tech, you know, the, the launch thing. They leveraged that. They yep. were really, really smart. You know, they went and chased that. Carmel, they want to be art and arts. And so they created an arts and design center, right? Yeah. Uh, we have Grand Park and we want to be the youth sports capital, right? And someone at one point said, if you build it, they will come, which is humiliating to me. But um, why aren't we, if we want to be the youth sports capital or something like that, why yeah. aren't we making it the youth sports capital? Why do we not have a badass hockey arena? I go to every other community, they got a sweet hockey arena. Why do we yeah. not have, you know what I mean? And, um, oh, no, yeah. Why does why does you you know why are our 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 club basketball programs they have to beg for space and our yeah. WYSI they're always on the chopping block you know and I you know there's yeah. just why are we not more of why aren't we grooming that better if that's what we are and then from yeah. the hospitality side why are we not this machine that creates hospitality workers and innovation in the hospitality world. Yeah. Um, is that something that would just takes time or do we not, we're not thinking that far out. That's kind yeah. of been a frustration. Well, real quick, you mentioned hockey uh, when Fisher was announced being the new home of the fuel, you know, that, that one kind of stung. That burned, bit. didn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> again, we, we have all this land out here, all this space, like, Oh my gosh, that would have been so awesome yeah, to have. And that. they own ground. So they do. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh. But I think that just goes back onto the negative rhetoric right now so yeah. you got to make sure that always presenting yourself positively and you never know who's mm-hmm. listening so that's yeah. just my two cents with that but um in terms of 
uh, continuing to develop our hospitality and being youth sports, do I think more can be done? 100%. There can always be more done in mm -hmm. everything that you do in life. Um, do I have the answer of why more hasn't been done or this or that? Conversations. I would like yeah. to be part of those conversations. Um, and I think my willingness, that's one thing I offer, is willing to be involved and be active and whatever needs to be done, I'm willing to do it. Um, I, I don't feel that I can have an honest opinion on something if I haven't been part of it. So yeah. I think it's difficult for me. Um, that, that's just a good question, though. Of why haven't we done this or that? But we can. And I think that yes, opportunity is out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're we're here at 90, or no, 50, not 96 minutes, 56 minutes. Um, okay. <laughs> I'd like to be on an hour. So um, you got four minutes, too. Oh, my maybe. goodness. Um, a you got a couple of minutes. And why yeah. don't you tell us some a couple of things you're excited about in Westfield and what you're looking forward to? Yeah. Um, so, well, kind of what we were just talking about, I'm excited for Grand Park. I'm excited for mm -hmm. the future there and just the, the opportunity. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that can be done as long as we take advantage of it and not just let it sit there. Let's again, build around it. I'm excited for what Grand Junction Plaza is going to be bringing. Uh, Old Town's the, I already mentioned the first step in that. So let's continuing to build around that. And I think you see kind of a pattern of where we have Grand Park, we have Grand Junction Plaza. It's these central hubs that again, mm -hmm. we can utilize and build around. That's what I'm excited for the most is mm -hmm. the, the possible opportunities. But then cool just stuff. in general, we have kind of a blank canvas where anything can be painted. And mm -hmm. that's again, what I'm excited about is just anything is possible. If we are open to new things and, and really open to, to anything in general that's being proposed, of course, we, we don't want certain things, but you gotta keep mm -hmm. your mind open. Um, that, that's what I'm excited for the most is it, just right. the, the, the opportunity and the possible future of West Hill as long as we embrace it. If you were uh, a 22 year old in Westfield yeah. um, and you wanted to get involved, where would be the first place you got involved? How would you get involved? I think just showing up. It doesn't matter what it is, you just show up. If you go to uh, the uh, chamber meetings uh, for uh, uh, young professionals, that's, that's mm -hmm. a one first step to just meeting people. Um, showing up to city council or planning commission meetings. Well, necessarily you don't have to do that much anymore. You can just watch them online. Yeah. Um, you know, That's so nice. just, just uh, really, I'm kind of telling myself, because this is what I did back when yeah. I was 22. I, I yep. just showed up to things. Um, our non-for-profits around the city, they are huge. Good they luck. are yep. the heart of our community, whether it be student impact or heart and soul clinic. Um uh, Westfield Youth Assistance, so on and so forth. I mean, so mm -hmm. many great organizations that you can be part of to really get you plugged in. You know, if, if you have a passion for being a mentor, again, Westfield Youth Assistance, that's a, a great place to start. Um, yeah, just, just so many opportunities that are out there. And I think the thing is, kind of bringing us full circle, is that we need to get those opportunities out, let people know that, hey, you can be doing this. Of course, if you have the time for it, though, because that's something that I say all the time that I'm kind of in a unique position. We don't have kids yet. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm able to invest more of my time into to serving yeah. Westfield. Um, whereas on the opposite, it's usually the older folks because they're retired have more time to do that. Yeah. Um, it, it's difficult as a young person to we'll use that 22 year old. You know, you're trying to start your career, start your family, so on and so forth. It's, it's a hard balance. And, mm -hmm. and I'll be honest, when I first came home from college, um, I burned myself out because I was on like nine different boards around the county. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is too much. Yeah. I've really learned that the, the most you should be doing is, is maybe three or four things. Mm -hmm. And uh, most important things to me are God, family and Westfield. So mm -hmm. um if you can balance those three things, whatever those three things are for you, then fantastic. Let's add a fourth, you know, et cetera. But um, you just got to stay focused and, and find opportunities to get plugged in. Yeah. I mean, you're in trouble right now, by the way, because yeah. of all those opportunities, you didn't suggest Westfield welcome. And so, oh, and it's too God. late now. It's yes. too we need late volunteers. Now. Please, please, we need volunteers. I, 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 I can't be voluntold anymore. Come, come take my place. Right? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Vic, Victor the Rock, I appreciate you doing this. Um, I appreciate you. I Thank you. Yeah. It's quick, and I, I, I know it's not everything, but it's a good way to start. Um, yeah. Thank you for working hard. I know you're young, and um, 
you recognize that, but I appreciate your energy and your excitement and your your uh, willingness to learn. So good for you, man, and best of luck with your council run. And thank you, sir. Yeah, and if anyone's updated. watching this that has questions, always feel free to to message me. I'm always happy to help. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good one.